and once you get into that mindset, like I promise you that like it will always be fun no matter what you're doing. Um, yeah, that's that's basically all I have. Um, <laughs> now starts my stand-up routine. <laughs> What's the deal with air? No, I'm not gonna. Do that. Um, yeah, so, uh, I mean, I could open up the floor for uh, questions if you guys have any. Let me, like, unmute the, uh, the questions mic in a second. Or you can do it for me. It's, the, it's number one on the board there. Just press the, the b button in front of the slider. Yeah, that mic right there is the one. So if you guys have any questions, like, come on down and grab the mic and you can ask it. And I'll answer basically anything except for... Uh, Specific topics that I will say I'm not going to answer that when you ask them. So, uh, oh, it's out. It's out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's out. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Uh, there we go. Do you? Okay. I talked to you a bunch earlier. Yes. With Kave, uh, what was your favorite line ever to record with it? I already answered this yesterday, but I will do it again just for you guys. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you. See, you get me. Thank you. Hey, hey. So I'm curious. Have you ever had any roles where you were just yourself? You just said it exactly how you, as a person, would have said it. I mean, you've heard me. You've heard me yak for a while now. I think. You've heard what role is the most like me. Um, but there have been a lot, like, Kame has a lot of, like, stuff where I'm just like, he just like me, FR. Like, FR. Um, so, probably him, but, like, there is a role that I can't talk about yet, because I'm under NDA, um, that also has just me, like, but way more chilled out, and I think that one, like, I love it so much, so. Please look forward to it. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, hey, hello. Uh, say if you're just like recording from home and you don't have the like the money or resources to make your own booth. Uh, what do you recommend doing? That is an excellent question. Uh, I think that when you're first starting <coughs> out, um, the quality of your microphone isn't shouldn't be too much of a factor. I think that there is a specific like priority that you should invest into. And I think it's you should start with investing in yourself, and then invest in your space, and then invest into your recording equipment. Because the thing about recording equipment is the better it is, the better it is at capturing all the, uh, all the bad parts of your recording environment. So if you get a crappy USB microphone, it might not pick up the reflections that are in your room that like a super high-end uh, XLR microphone might pick up. <clears throat> So I think a lot of people make the mistake of getting like a high-end microphone and then just putting it in their room and it'll just sound really echoey and really reverby and like really bad. But it's like, that's why you need to work on your room first, but before that you need to work on yourself first. If you don't have the money for like a simple USB mic, like you could probably buy one for like 30 bucks somewhere. Um, like you can use your phone to record your voice. Like I've had to do auditions on my phone. I just am in my car and I record it and like I haven't booked a job with it yet, but like it's, <laughs> there are, I know people that have done that, that like they've recorded on their phones and they have booked work that way. Um, so it really just comes down to finding like something that records your voice and you know getting it as cheap as you can and like using that to like just get started because I think the most important part is that you just get started and you just start going I started out with a SingStar microphone sitting oh, in a cup like that was how I got my it was like 15 bucks at a GameStop it was like the crappiest thing ever and I got work out of it like that's how I got into some fandoms like it really is just like start as small and basic as possible just do the thing, and then it, from there you'll start to get the experience, and you start to figure stuff out, and like that way you can start building up. So I, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello again. Hello. <laughs> um, totally unrelated. Did you see the Northern Lights last night? I didn't. I couldn't see them from my hotel room, and I was too lazy to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen them like anywhere else? Though? 
I, I think when I was younger, so I lived in Norway for a bit, um, and I do remember maybe seeing them, but it's been forever, and pro they probably weren't all that cracked up, so I forgot about them, so <laughs> I don't know. I think they're going to happen again tonight, so I'm going to see if I can see them then. So be on the lookout. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Uh, you mentioned, you know, moving to the U.S. Uh, to, to kind of help get started with, with I mean, you were going to school for, for computer science, but um, you mentioned moving to the U.S. and that helped get your career started, and then, you know, again, moving to Texas specifically. And so I guess my question is, how essential do you think it is to be there, be where the companies are, where the people are, uh, especially in this day and age, kind of post-COVID, where remote recordings have started to see more prevalence? Excellent question. Um, I think that it really comes down to what you want to do as an actor and what kind of goals that you have for yourself. Um, I think the general rule of thumb is if you want to work in a specific company or in a specific property, you have to move to where that company is. If you want to work at Crunchyroll anime, like anime, like you have to move to Texas because they only work with locals unless you're like exceptional. Um, and like that's their rule. Like that's the unfortunate part of it. It used to be a bit better during like the peak of pandemic because they were remote and they were open to everybody. Uh, but then they got worse after the pandemic, and like that's why they're doing this thing. That's why I moved out of Texas. Um, so to give you an idea, like I was already in a few Steam games before I even thought about moving to America. I think that no matter where you are in the world, if you're doing like what I describe and you're just, you know, grinding out auditions and doing and doing and doing, you can accomplish a lot. Like, I mean a lot. Um, there are actors that are not based in Texas or Los Angeles or any of the hot spots that are in things that are incredible. Uh, like uh, Michael Kovac in um, the, the Amazing Digital Circus. He doesn't live in any of the hot spots, but, he, but he's in one of the most popular things that has ever come out of YouTube, ever. And I love that show, by the way, it's great. Um, and so, like, it really boils down to what you want as an actor. Uh, I think that, can, I, I'm not too familiar with Canada's, like, uh, voice acting scene, to be quite honest with you guys, but I do know that you guys have a ton of cartoons. And, uh, and they do like some anime here and there. If that's what you want to do, then you can definitely do it here. But if you want to be in like Crunchyroll stuff, like you have to move to Texas. It all comes down to what you want to do. Um, I think that one cool trick uh, that you can put into place is basically look up actors that are doing what you want to do and see where they're located. And like that, that'll let you triangulate like, oh, a lot of the people that are in Genshin right now are in Los Angeles. I mean, it used to be a bit better. Like they used to, you know, bring people from. I know I'll never be the same Shook my world so hard again Wish I washed away my sins He's a dead man walking Blank stare in his eyes Should've given up on the ones I trust Never should've been surprised When they shot him